Alrighty, so now, like I said, we want to do some more UV wrapping, uh, but since we basically did finish up the table in the last video, it'll be great to kind of apply all those same things to our chair, right? And it really is going to be all the same stuff. Uh, so of course, one of the things we want to do is, you know, maybe go to our modifiers, and you'll notice there's still some modifiers applied to these, right? Remember, you might need to still apply all your stuff, right? The mirror modifier is still there, so we can apply all for that. We see we still have it for this one. Apply all. Um, I'm using that mod. Remember, though, there is on the actual modifier itself, there's kind of like a camera icon, right? An old school camera icon. I know that nowadays it's like phone cameras. You're like, what's that icon, right? It's the old school kind of cameras, right? What cameras used to look like. Actually, you know, real professional cameras, even if they're digital cameras, still look like that. Um, but there's this little V, right? It's kind of sandwiched in between the camera and the X. The X allows you to remove the modifier. You can get rid of it, right? But there's a little V pointing down. If you click on that, your apply button is there. Blender's always had the ability to apply the modifiers manually one at a time, right? So remember, you have those options to easily apply those, right? That little V, apply. Those other ones like apply all though, remember that is an add-on. Edit preferences, if you want to turn this add-on on. Add-ons. Remember, you can go to the little magnifying glass up here, M-O-D for mod. Modifier tools, right? I checked that on, and that actually is what gives you the um, apply all, delete all kind of stuff. So it's kind of a neat thing. I've, uh, I like having it because sometimes I'll have a couple of modifiers on, right? Particularly when we see our spaceship, we're going to see we're going to have the mirror modifier and the subdivisional surface modifier on. And so it's great to just be able to hit apply all, and it applies both of them, right? So it's a little bit faster and easier to apply your modifiers that way. Obviously, the modifiers themselves have the um, apply feature built into it, right? You just have to click on that little V for the pull-down menu. So in this case, I've kind of applied those um, because for us, we're just, we just want some unique texture on everything, right? So that, that way we have a, a different texture on both sides. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to be able to unwrap these things, right? And one of the first and easier steps that we could do is in 4 for object mode, I could easily just left-click drag to select all my objects, right? Remember, you can actually select all your objects at the same time. Uh, you'll see most of them have kind of a darker orange color, and then there will be one that's got a lighter orange color. That's just indicating multiple object selections. You see they're kind of all selected right there. Um, we want to get the checker display on this. Um, also, we want to switch to UV editing workspace, right? Remember, we have modeling workspace on right now, but there is there are several tabs up here at the top, right? And one of them is called UV editing. And that allows us to go to the UV editing stuff, right? That gives us our UV editing window, um, our tools when we have UV uh, editing going. And of course, it still has the normal 3D viewport. Now, I want to add a texture and a material to all of these so that we have that distortion grid on there, right? We saw that last time. And the cool thing is it gets us a little bit of exposure of how to create textures, right? Um, we're eventually going to paint textures uh, on later lectures for this, but for right now we're just applying kind of a, that UV grid texture. So remember in the properties menu, right? So remember we have our outliner up here on the top right, and then the kind of bottom right side is your properties for all these different things tools, rendering, um, modifiers, materials. And at the very bottom, we have kind of those reddish colored, kind of red salmon colored little ball and what looks like a checkerboard uh, square, these are related to materials and textures. That reddish ball at the bottom here is your material, right? And you'll notice that when I select all of these and I go here, there's no material there, right? You can, of course, assign a new one. But remember, there is that little kind of whitish checkerboard ball right there, right? You'll see it's kind of in a couple places, right? It's basically the same icon as the red one, except it's white. And you'll actually kind of see the EV kind of uh, material viewport display option up here is similar icon. So those are all kind of related, right? In terms of being related to material stuff and showing you the materials uh, things. This just happens to be displaying all the materials uh, uh, properties on the mesh. 
and it's actually awesome. It's, you, you can use Eevee, and Eevee's a pretty awesome real-time render. When we see texture painting later on, uh, we're going to see it, and it's quite cool. Um, but I'm going to go to the little white ball right here, click on it, and you notice the material is in there. It's just that this wasn't assigned to all these objects. So by selecting all of them, and then actually clicking on this little kind of white checkerboard ball right here, it's right next to new. Remember, it's all part of the red ball down here. I just click on material, and what it does is it assigns that material to all the objects. So now when you uh, select these, uh, uh, did do it to that one. Um, so in this case, we actually do have to move it one at a time, unfortunately. <laughs> Thought we could do that. Um, but we can just go in here really quickly and just kind of make sure to click on the object, click on that little white ball there, pick the material. And now all of them have that same material. So whichever object they go to and plug in a uh, the UV grid, it'll be on all of them now, right? So you do have to make sure to kind of select your objects, click on the little white ball here, pick material. And that's the kind of default material that um, Blender has that's on stuff. You can create your own new ones. In fact, when we get to texture later on, we'll create separate materials for each of these objects that are different, that will have different textures plugged in. But we don't need that right now. So of course, with the red ball on and the object selected and the material applied, you see you have all these controls right down here, right? And it's the principled, principled BSDF texture or material. That's actually kind of a... Um, like a, a high-end um, material uh, code nowadays uh, that's, uh, I, I want to say, I think Pixar developed it. Um, that's a, a quite a nice kind of core default material. You'll see some variation of it in a lot of packages nowadays, right? Um, so by default, uh, Blender's materials are, are quite good. And it's kind of got just about all the major controls in it. Uh, so in this case, at the very top, we want to go to base color. Right, so there's lots of properties in your base color, subsurface, metallic. We'll see that a little bit, little bit later on, uh, uh, this uh, term. We see how we can pick colors, turn the values up and down. So you can do a lot with materials that has nothing to do with the texture. In this case, though, I do want a texture. So you notice these little dots in front, right? And we've kind of talked about this already before, but I, I, I want to spend even more time talking about it right now. These little dots... And some of them are gray, some of them are purple, some of them are yellow. Um, those will let you, when you click on them, plug something into it. You can actually attach something into there. So if I click on the yellow dot for base color right here, it brings up this menu. And there's lots of things you can plug into it. We just want an image texture. So we just move our cursor over to the image texture option, right? And then all of a sudden, you'll see now there's more stuff here, right? There's linear flat repeat. Uh, you can see that there's an image texture name in here. And it automatically opens this up. And you see there's open. So technically, if I had a, an image from outside that I just wanted to plug into here, I could. But in this case, I want to create a new one, right? A new one. So I click on that. And we can give it a name. Let's call it uh, UV. You can give it a resolution. Uh, I think the 1024 by 1024 would be good enough for us, but you could actually type in larger numbers. Um, it's kind of one of the things I wish Blender had was presets. A lot of packages will have a preset, 1024 by 1024, 2048 by 2048, 4096 by 4096. But the preset's basically either half or double, right? So if you wanted to kind of go to the next accepted resolution, um, you could just type, you could just double the 1024, right? Do it 2048. We'll leave it 1024. Uh, generated type, this is important. Blank would allow you to create a blank new texture to work with and paint on. So we will eventually see that when we do more texturing later on. But right now, we don't want our texture to do that. We want it to be a UV grid. So I click on generated type blank, right? And if I click on that, it's got a couple of other options. Uh, there is technically a color grid if you really want to use that. I like UV grid. It's just a little bit cleaner and simpler. But UV grid. We hit OK. And now there is a texture plugged into UV grid, uh, or into base color. Now remember, we're not seeing it because these display ball types here, right? And if you're in UV editing workspace on a small monitor, you might not see them because this window's bigger. Remember, you can put your cursor over the divider between the windows and left click drag to the left or right to make them bigger or smaller. And that'll often let you see more stuff here. Remember, there's wireframe. 
right? There is shaded, and then there is material preview. And that really just means E, and it's going to show all the texture effects on there. But now you'll see when we turn that kind of that third one on, that well, looks a lot like the material ball, right? Those material balls right here, it looks a lot like that. That really is doing exactly that. It's just showing you all of your material stuff on there, right? It'll show your textures. If you've got a texture plugged in to material, it'll show that on the model. So to really see your textures, you have to kind of go to that shading option right there, right? Material preview. It's that third little ball right up here, though. Just click on it, right? There's toggles. We'll talk about the last one later on, which is the uh, full renderer. That's cool and useful. We just don't need it right now. And now we can see our textures on there. And we can see that the UV wrapping is not ideal on this, right? We can see that there's lots of distortion on it, right? Remember, we want this to look like a really clean checkerboard, not a stretched out, distorted checkerboard. So in this case, maybe I could just work on the seat for the moment. And I could always kind of delete the rest of those. Or not delete the, but just turn the eyeballs off, right? Remember, there is the actual little green triangle here. And that green triangle. Do you need a mask? Uh, there's uh, one right over there, see by the mouse. There. There's just a bag that's open, you can just kind of pull one out from there. All right. So uh, basically, right, um, you don't have to do this because technically all the UV maps are their own UVs for each object. Naming to them could be useful, though, right? That way when you go to plug stuff in later on, you know you're getting, you know, the, you know the UVs are what you want them to be, right? It's, it's just a good organizational principle. But remember, there is that green triangle when you're in object mode. Um, go to UV map section, and there's your UV map, and you can just double click on it. And when you double click on it, you can name it, right? So we can just call this seat. And now we've got a name for the UVs on it. Now remember to set up UVs, we go to two for edge mode, right? We go to two for edge mode. Now, if you want to, you can, of course, quickly turn off your material preview to shade it just to see the texture without it. And all we really have to do at this point is make scenes, right? And remember, seams are edge loops, right? They're edge loops. So two for edge mode, right? Because we're using industry compatible. Remember, alt left mouse button rotates camera, alt middle mouse button moves camera, alt right mouse button zooms. Never hurts to remind you of those sometimes. And I'm just going to double left click, right? Now, in this case, you see how it kind of will stop at a three star, a, a vertex of three edges coming out. So you'll probably have to go shift double left click. Shift double left click. Shift double left click, right? Because remember, double left click. You know, double click with your left mouse button selects edge loops when you're in edge mode. But shift adds, adds to selections, right? And then, of course, I can right click because that brings up my edge context menu, mark scene. Now, that'll actually probably work pretty well for us. So with that one seam, I could then maybe go to... Um, in this case, maybe I'll just do control A in edge mode, go to UV, unwrap, unwrap, and you'll notice how you don't even have to be in face mode to unwrap. I'm just in the habit of going to face mode to unwrap, but you just have to select all. That is important. When you want to unwrap whatever selection type you're in, you need to select all for that object so that it knows to unwrap those polygons, right? So making the seam isn't enough. You make the seam, then you select all, and then you hit UV unwrap. Now, of course, if I turn my material preview on, we can see that overall did a pretty good of giving us a low distortion UV unwrap, right? You might have a little bit of distortion right here, right? But honestly, that's going to be pretty acceptable. That'll work pretty well. We're going to do 3D projection painting anyways, and that can compensate for tech distortion somewhat. Um, if you needed to, you could always add a few more seams to help it out, right? Sometimes I have found a seam like this can help, right? So if I double left click on that seam, shift double left click on that seam, 
Maybe shift double left click on these seams right here. Although maybe actually this one should probably be a little bit different. Oh, let me undo. But if you need to, you can always mark a few extra seams, right? Right click, mark seam. I'm going to go through here, just kind of add a few there. Mark seam. Let's remember, double left click. Shift double left click. Maybe a shift left click there. Right click, mark seam. You can always add a few more seams in here. In fact, I might not even need these, right? I kind of feel like I won't need those. So if you need, want to, you can always go back and select those, right-click, clear seam, right? So you see how you can actually get rid of seams as well? Just by selecting the edges that are marked, red, right-click, clear seam. Now I do Control-A to select all, right? But it is in the select menu, select all. I can then go back to UV, unwrap, and you see how it did actually handle those corners better and give you uh, lower distortion? So sometimes you just add a little bit of an extra one up here just to kind of let it open up the sides a little bit more, right? It doesn't bend those quite as much. That can cause a little bit of that distortion. The distortion was pretty minor, so it really honestly was not going to cause any real problems with texturing, particularly with your 3D projection paint, which is what we're going to primarily rely on. But if you do want to get a little bit lower distortion, you might even add like some little partial seams, right? Some little partial seams. Now we've got some good low UV distortion on that. Uh, you will notice that we probably are missing some texture space here. This might be one of those things that where we could join some objects together later on, right, to maximize the space a little bit better. It is a lot of texture space not being used. So I'm going to go to 4 for object mode. And I think I'm going to turn on the, uh, the headrest. Let's do the headrest really quick. So turn the eyeball on for headrest. I can go to two for edge mode. Remember, you can leave the material preview on, right, for doing UV seams. I'll probably name this, right? Remember that green triangle brings these up. You can click on UV maps, double click on that to name it, call it headrest. If you don't name it though, you're okay. You can name it later on. It's not gonna really have that much of an impact on anything. It's more, it's more an organizational thing, right? So two for edge mode, and of course I could go in here and I could just add some edge loops, right? Double left click, shift double left click, shift double left click. You see I'm kind of adding this around the back here. Shift double left click. There is that last little one, right? Usually you don't want a little gap like that, so I'll kind of finish this off by shift single left click on those. Right click. Mark seam. So now we've got a seam there. And now we might just want to help this a little bit just by kind of doing those little kind of extra seams here. Right? Double left click, shift double left click, right click mark seam. All right? Double left click there, shift double left click. Remember, F will frame selection, right? So it zooms in on that. But you notice how I was kind of already getting my camera rotate was already centering on it. Remember, that's a preference, a really awesome preference. So even though you have F for frame selection, F for frame, right, which will automatically zoom in and set the camera rotate on whatever selected, if you go to Edit Preferences, Navigation, there is something called Orbit Around Selection, which is awesome. Whatever is selected, your camera will automatically orbit around. Not only do you see that's useful for modeling, but that actually works for sculpting and painting too. So wherever you last sculpted or painted with your brush, will actually do that also. So it's actually really, really cool. I love having orbit around selection on. It is a preference though, right? You have to turn it on. Edit, preferences, navigation, check on orbit around selection. But once again, right click, mark seam. You see how it's really the same stuff again and again? We do tend to kind of take advantage of these corners here, though, right? I'll double left click there. Shift add, double left click there. Right click, mark seams. Remember, seams are just edges and edge loops. That's all they are, right? So now we have those seams marked. And I can do Control A to select all, right? Remember, there is a cookie for select all. 
but it is in the select menu, select all. I can go to UV menu, unwrap, right? And that's in the, the uh, UV editor itself over here. That's why we're in the UV editing workspace. UV unwrap. And there we go. You see that actually did a pretty good job of unwrapping that with pretty low distortion. There we go. And you notice this actually packs and takes up a good amount of space, so I think we'll probably leave that alone for now. Uh, I think the next video and the next lecture we'll do, we'll kind of uh, finish this off. Uh, we'll start to kind of explore it, unwrapping some of the other stuff, right? So there's probably still going to be a couple more days of UV unwrapping videos. Uh, but I think that's great for uh, kind of a, a third video for us to kind of get it going. All right, so let's go to File, Save As. Always good to kind of rename some of these things, have a couple different versions of your files. I'll call this chair UV. There we go. Save as. And I think we'll stop there.